Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at a brand new marker that was just released called Tri Blend Brush. So uh, about a year, maybe a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago now, uh, I reviewed the original Tri Blend markers. This is what they look like here. Um, and I thought it was really cool because these markers had three different tips. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put this piece of paper over here so you can see. Um, there would be a light tip here, and then there would be a medium tip or a shade. They all were bullet tips. And then there would be a dark tip. So you have one, two, three shades. And that way you could get some very easy blends with a limited amount of supplies. Um, I had the first set of 24 of the Tri Blend Markers and reviewed them. And um, I'm going to show you the swatch from those. I think I actually stuck them down in here. So this is what they look like all blended out. I was very pleased with the, ch the colors they chose, how well they blended. Um, I got really great results with those and I thought they were a really excellent product for like if you want to go travel to a friend's house to craft, you don't want to have a ton of markers, they were comfortable to hold. Um, and I kind of wish there was they had brush tips but the bullet tips were close enough together in value and tone that they blended really well. Uh, so I was very excited to hear that Spectrum Noir was coming out with a brush version of these markers. And that's what we're going to take a look at today. So you can purchase the 24 colors in a boxed set for, um, I think it's somewhere around like $115. And I get like all those colors. I don't know if they're going to come out with more colors in the future. They did come out with more of the original ones. I'll update the video description with more information because I do have an email out to my contact at Spectrum Noir. I also want to be completely transparent here uh, and let you know Spectrum Noir sent me these for free to review. So I did not buy these. I did not buy the other um, tri blend markers either. So I want to put that out there in case that makes you weigh my review differently. Um, I've always give my honest opinion and um, my true thoughts. I don't hide or conceal anything. Uh, but I think it's important for you to know that because sometimes, you know, if you go and you spend a lot of money on something, you're going to be a little bit harder on a product subconsciously. Uh, I try not to, but you know, I'm human. Uh, so this is how they come if you're get the, getting them at like a big box store. The nice thing about this is you know they haven't been opened and used, which is good because considering the length of each of the marker sections, you know, you can look in there and you can see how much of that is cap. Probably half of that that is cap. You know, you're only going to have so much ink in there. So it's, it's important that they're not... Um, you know, they're not open to be uncapped or used. So I'll show you how to open it here. You've got all your information and inside each of these markers, you get a little, um, a little paper that tells you how to blend, which is just a very, um, a very basic um, instruction strip. It's in several different languages and it says to put the light color down first, then use the dark color to put the shadow in, and then use the mid-tone to uh, color over the dark color and blend in, and then reapply the light color, this time slightly over coloring the mid color for a smooth gradation. Um, I think that's a great way to blend because, especially if your colors aren't really close together, it gives you uh, the best possible chances of blending. The only downside with that method is when you color an area all in first, you can have some feathering or bleeding outside the line. So if you're going to use this method, I would suggest you start slightly within the um, the area that you're coloring. Now, I don't know why I'm holding this. It's not like you can really read it from there. Uh, but that's included in every marker, which I think is really helpful. Um, of course, I'm not crazy about the waste in this packaging, but it does make sure your markers are... Um, are fresh. Now, if you order the set of 24, it comes in a box, and the that's how these came to me, and I, they, they each had like a plastic shrink wrap on them, so, um, and I didn't have any issues with any of them being dry, so that's nice. Um, so, let's take a look at this marker. I've been making my little swatches here, so we can color this swatch together, and we will do it in the method that they recommend on the, um, on the packaging. So, we're going to start with our light color, TB1. And I'm going to go ahead and just color this in, just give it a nice, a nice saturation here. This is, um, I believe this is stamped on Nina. I had these stamped out from earlier. Sometimes I'll stamp out a bunch of swatches at once, so when I, um, when I go to use them. You know, I just have some extras when I get some new markers. So then it says to go in with a darker area and shade. That is a huge jump. Those two colors. I would go with colors close together um, if I was going to just be, you know, 
choosing my regular markers, then go over the entire dark area and flick it in to blend. And then reapply my light going over, slightly overlapping the middle color. So we are using their method here to blend. And uh, it's okay, but I don't feel like I got the best blend. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of dark. I'm gonna go in with my medium, maybe bring it up a little bit more this time. This is a huge jump. I um, I would pick colors closer together. Blue is a hard color to blend. Red and purple are hard colors to blend. And there you go. Uh, let's let's just swatch these out. So this is uses TB1, TB4, and TB8. I think that's too big of a jump, quite frankly. Okay, I mean. That's, if you were like taking a Copic class, they would not have you use markers that are that far apart. They'd have you use, maybe that's your lightest, that's your darkest, and they'd have something in between. And on the original um, TV blend, they used a much, a much lighter, a much closer together combination. They used TB2, TB3, and TB4. Let me just show you that. Um, I'll show it on the edge of the paper here. So if we did that with those colors, so we color it in. Sorry about the squeaking. You know, the bullet tips are harder. They do make that squeak. And also a harder marker can help force the colors together, which is um, which is helpful. So now I'm gonna go in with the dark like it says on the brochure. Put my darker color, and you can see that's kind of like what the medium color is there. And then your medium color overlap. Gosh, good that's in frame. I was just like, oh no, I was zoomed in. Did I keep this in frame? I'm telling you, this marker review has been a roller coaster, an absolute roller coaster. <laughs> So look at that, we've got a really nice gradation there. I do like those rich jewel tones, but um, just the colors are too far apart. So that was um, TB1, so we had this, the original one started with TB2, so it started a smidgen darker. The middle tone on the other one was TB3, this one had TB4. So you're already going from a, a level, a value of one to a value of four, and then you're going up to a value of eight. That is a huge range, it's a huge range to get to get to blend with alcohol markers, even with a brush pen. Um, and here we've got two, three, four. We literally have the next, like the three values that are close together. So um, so that's kind of a bummer. I think that's difficult to blend. Uh, I don't know if they're gonna come up with more colors. It would give you some more intermediate, intermediate tones, but the, the, the premise of these markers being easy to blend is that you shouldn't have to do that. So let me do another little example here. I'm actually gonna get a fresh piece of paper because I've kind of filled that one up. Uh, I just I was just gonna test a couple colors then I decided to just go ahead and test them all. Um, so we're gonna do a circle blending thing. I'm just gonna, well, I guess I, I can do it like this so you can kind of see the other, you don't really need to see the other example. Yeah, I'm just gonna put that aside. We'll look at it in a second. Okay, so this is, pro this is how I would recommend if you are making, if you have one of the colors that has a huge jump, and by huge jump, I, like if you look at the swatches of the color and you see like, I mean, that's pretty gradual. I mean, the, it is a dynamic blend, but you've, you know, there's equal steps going in there. That's a huge jump. That's weird because that's almost like a dusty, ro dusty mauve color. That's a bright purple and that's a, like a bright pink. I don't get why they, those colors were put together. Um, so like these, the dark red blend, that's, those colors are pretty close together. You're only like a step apart on those. Those are gonna blend fine. Same with the burnt orange. But you look at the coral red, you've got almost like a pale, pale pastel yellow, then you've got a mid-tone coral, and then you've got this deep rust color. So I mean, so if you get a color like this, or any of these other ones where you have a huge jump in colors, this is how I would recommend doing it. Um, and we'll take a look at each of these colors uh, as individual markers. In case you wanna try these, there are some colors I would choose over others. Um, so let's say you want to shade, you're gonna color like a blueberry or a ball or something like that. So you're gonna make your circle. I'm just, you know, I don't have a line here. Maybe I'll draw one later. Okay, you wanna saturate that puppy real good so that the paper is gonna be wet. You should see it colored over into the back. Okay, you should see a ghost of it. Then I'd go to the medium color because I know that's in itself that is probably what I should be using for my dark. 
it's actually even a little bit too dark, I think. So I'm going to do my shading with that. And then as quickly as I can, I'm going to go back in with that light color. Also, I want to let you know, I would not, I would be having my lines like a 32nd of an inch larger than, than this is. So if I was doing a stamped image, I would keep a, a gap of, um, of white between my ink and where I'm coloring. Okay. I like the nibs on these. They feel like they're pretty resilient. They're firmer than the Illustrator, the new Illustrator nibs, but they are, um, but they don't feel like they're the fibery ones. They feel like they're a good uh, Japanese nib. Oh gosh. You have to be real steady of hand. So much ink comes out on these. Oh gosh, I can't draw a circle. And so I would have this darker color actually extend beyond just a little bit. I wouldn't go around so much, but man, oh man, I can't seem to get a draw a circle for my life today. For all you guys that say, oh, I can't paint, I can't draw a circle, I can't draw a straight line. Honey, join the club. <laughs> a lot of artists suffer from the can't draw a perfect anything, perfect circle, perfect line. It doesn't matter. You can still be an artist. All right, so now I'm going to go over that entire blue area. Try to get rid of that line. This is difficult. This is a huge jump. Okay, make sure you have something under your t under your paper so you're not ruining your table also. And then you're going to work at that that edge. Now, I did choose a very difficult, probably the, one of the most difficult colors here to demonstrate this. Um, so I want to be completely fair here and let's we got to let it dry before you can really see. Do the Polaroid shake while we while we let that dry. And I'll zoom out a bit too so we can have that all set. Um, so I did that with each of the colors that I have. I've got 23, there's 24, there's probably like another yellow, I would seem, that it would seem, because that seems to be what's missing out of this, like another, maybe like a lemony yellow color. Um, I mean, yes, I have some highlight. I've got shadow, I've got dimension. I don't have the blend that I would want, that I would expect from a brush marker, but I don't think it's the fault of the ink or the, or the brush nibs. It's a fault of the, the jump in colors here. So what I would do is I would, use other markers I have that are closer in tone and um, you know if I had a color with a big jump. So let's take a look at the colors here. These are all the colors I have. Like I mentioned there's one more that I don't have but um, but we could take a look. This and you can see I still have, I'm still seeing some streaks. I still had a hard time blending some of these colors even where they were fairly evenly spaced. Now this we've got light, medium, dark. They're evenly spaced but there is a big jump in the colors there. That's from going from that tone to that tone is a really big jump and you're going to get some streaks even with a really good quality nib. This one, humongous jump, do not recommend. Um, and I've also noticed that there's not exactly a, um, there's some discrepancies between the, the colors in these markers and the original Spectrum Noir markers that I have. So that's another thing we're going to look at in a minute because I'm going to look at my uh, my swatches of my standard original like Spectrum Noir markers and Illustrator markers. I don't have them all, but I do have a good selection of them because when I first um, was introduced to Spectrum Noir, it was the original um, square ones. They I bought... Um, sets of 24 at Consumer Crafts, may they rest in peace, they had the sets of 24 on sale for 20 bucks, and I couldn't resist, and at that time, there were no cheap markers on Amazon that you could buy, and um, and I loved them. Now, the downside was they dried out really fast. They, they had some problems with the caps, so they came out with the ones that kind of look like this, but were uh, shorter, and just had the two tips, and so I got some of those, and um, they've eventually revamped both of those styles, and then they came up with the illustrators, and then they uh, came up with new illustrators, because the old illustrator nibs were, were fraying on people, and the new illustrator nibs are nice. I prefer these, because the new illustrator nibs are really floppy. I can show you here what a new illustrator nib looks like. Um, the new illustrator nibs just are, are super, are super bendy. Um, if I can, uh, can you see that? I'm just gonna try to, try to tip it so you can kind of see how much, how flexible and bendy they are. And they're very soft feeling. Um, they're, they're nice, but I think if you're trying to blend, you need a little bit more, a little bit more push. Let's see, that one is CG3. I might actually have that. Um, I got CG2 and CG4. Well, we can, let's, let's just, so if I had CG4, I could take CG3. So you can use these with your other markers and then go into this uh, CG2. 
and then go into the CG1. Pay no attention to the other squiggles I made before I started this blend, because obviously they've dried. But, um, you know, they'll work really well together. Uh, I like the tips on these better because they feel like they're like that foam rubbery type of nib, like a Copic, uh, but they're a little bit firmer than this. I actually pulled the nib out to see if they were double-ended like the um, the new Ohuhu markers were and the old, old Spectrum illustrators were, and they're not. They have a, like, they have a tip, they look like a Japanese nib. They look good. Um, so I just wanted to say that. I'm happy with the nibs. Um, but the, the other thing that I've noticed with this company is that they will often release a product and then let it kind of, it, I feel like the consumer tests, the consumer tests the product and then they take their feedback and they come back out with a better product. I don't know if they're going to revamp these. Um, I just think the color selection on some of the blends could be better, could be better done because they've got such big jumps here. And yes, you can make larger jumps with a brush tip marker, but I mean, that's just giving, I don't know why they would. You know, they could keep them a little bit softer. The only thing I'm thinking is maybe they're trying to get, just have like 24 colors and, and do a broader reach of the colors so they don't have to come up with another 24. Maybe they would want to keep it really limited. Maybe that's feed, feedback that they got that maybe people didn't like buying so many markers. So if they kept it at the 24, which gave you a combination of 72 colors, then their customers would be happier. And in order to do that, they had to have a bigger, um, they had to take bigger jumps in their color blends. This is speculation. I have no idea if that's what, what they thought, but they do have the tendency to take feedback and then apply that feedback from their customers to the next release. Um, that's really nice that they take that feedback. It's just kind of a bummer for the early adopters to kind of get stuck with, you know, the old the old style, like the pencils. They, they released the pencils and then uh, they got feedback and they came out with a new, completely different pencil. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's just something to, to consider with the, with the track record. Like, I mean, that coral red, that is such a humongous jump, but that does not, that's not going to blend really well. Um, the pale pink, the same way. It's almost like I would take that middle value on the pale pink and blend it with the coral red because, well, we can do that, actually. Um, let me just grab a, another scrap. So if I took coral red, this is the coral blend, and I took the pale pink... Um, I've been doing so much swatching, it probably seems very disorganized to take the middle pale pink. Okay, so let's see. I take the, if I want to take the middle coral red, the light coral red, and the middle pale pink, that's what I would do. And if I use their, um, is that the coral, that's a coral blend. So I've got the latest coral blend. I'm going to do, let's do a ball again. Or some sort of roundish shape. <laughs> Perfect circle time is not now. And then I would take the medium pale pink because it seems to just be more of a coral than a pink. It does not look like that Pepto-Bismol color. Then I can blend back with my um, light coral blend. I can go in with the medium coral color. But that also implies that the people buying these markers, which I think they're probably um, aimed more at beginners to markers that's saying that's assuming that they know about um oh wait i need the middle color that's say that's assuming that they know that much about blending which i feel like a product like this should really take a lot of that guesswork out and um and it doesn't and Sarah, that was a great blend so why didn't they do that color that color and that color um, so this is where we get to some discrepancies I've noticed between the Spectrum Noir Tri Brush, tri -brush markers and also their Tri Blend markers. Um, I noticed discrepancies between these markers and their original line. So what I did here, and I haven't done the True Blue one yet because I wanted to save opening that until I was on, um, until I was recording here. Um, I've gone through and written a B on any of these brush markers because I noticed that there were big differences between the colors in the tri blends and in the um, and in the original the original Spectrum Noir markers. And granted, my originals go from you know their first iteration, second, third, fourth iteration, so they could have changed formulations in the time being. So you got to keep that in mind. So TB one. So let's put a B here. That looks different than that to me. Now we've got TB4. Now that's TB4. That's their brush mark. Their tri original tri blend is that swatch there. That's their classic marker there. And then we've got uh, TB8. That's pretty close. It seems like this might be a little bit bluer. Um, 
But looking at these other colors, like this is the purple blend here, PL, because all the numbers are on the, um, they're on the little nibs there. They tell you what the color in the Spectrum Noir world it is. So um, these aren't designed to be refillable, but you could pull the nibs out and drop refill inks in there if you want to. <clears throat> I don't see why not. No, why why wouldn't you if you have the re refill inks? It makes sense. Um, so if you have a look at that, I mean, PL5 in the Tri-Blend does not look like PL5 in the um, Classic. Um, same with PL3. They do not look the same. Um, that one looks good. This one looks off. This one looks like the tribe, the other tribe blend, uh, HB3, but it doesn't look like the HB3 I have in my classic marker. I don't know if things changed, uh, but you know they all just seem, not all of them, but a lot of them just seem a little bit off. And I think that's a that's a pretty big deal if you're someone who's in love with this collection or this line of markers and you have the reinkers. Like if you look at DG4 in the original and DG4 in the brush. The DG4 in the brush looks like the DG3, and that was another one that I had issue with of the colors being too similar. So here you have a super light color, and then DG3 and DG4, they look almost the same, but they don't look like DG4 in the original Spectrum Noir markers I have is more of a brown, It's much and it's much darker. Well, it's at least a shade darker. So it's like it would have been much better to go in with a middle ground color like that. You've got light, then you've got dark, dark. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, you can take a look at the other colors because I just put B's next to the uh, next to the hand colored swatches just so I would have, um, just so I would know. Oh, sorry about the glare. Oh, I was gonna shut my overhead lights off before I filmed. So like the, the GB5 in the classic looks different than either of the, the tri-blend versions. Um, GB1, the new ones look a little bit lighter. Um, the grays look all right. The flesh tones are weird. The flesh tones don't even seem to be the same between the brush and the old tribal ones. So these are the original flesh tone markers, which, you know, they're some people's flesh tone. They're very, very pale. Um, now they call them light flesh. And these bees here, they just kind of look like blobs, but those are what were in the tri-blends. Those are the old tri-blends. So those are the brush, those are the bullet, and these are the original tones, which are completely different. Um, which mine were kind of drying out. I had always had trouble with those keeping them wet enough. Um, then we have, because I noticed the flesh shades here on the new tri-blends are very yellow, and the ones before on the older tri-blends are are very rosy, like right there, if I hold those side by side, can you see? The old one's rosy, this one's more yellow. Um, going through, so these consistencies bother me, or inconsistencies bother me, like though the bright pinks are okay, except for BP7, which is more of a magenta or fuchsia in the old the classic marker, and it's more of like a plum in the new, in the tri-blends. The pale pinks are really different. The pale pinks are warm undertoned in the, um, in the, the new brush markers, but they're neutral to cool undertoned in the old ones. Pink violet, they're, the new brush markers look almost purple, and they look more like a dusty rose in the um, the classics. And the magentas are the magentas are a little off too. Like the the MG one is much more Pepto Bismoly in the new one. It's more dusty in the old one. Um, and these have been in a closed binder. They haven't had exposure to light. So, and I just did them like last year when I got the uh, the original tribe blends because I was thinking something didn't quite add up. Um, and the reds look good, the, or the dark reds look good. The corals look, well, the corals are off. The corals are different from even the first tribe blends to the new tribe blends, going by the color number, color code that's on them. Um, and yeah, it's just kind of, uh, it's just weird. It's so weird. I mean, how can so many markers be off? And granted, I have a few versions, but the colors should be the same. If they're using LV1, LV1 ink should be the same in any marker that says LV1 in it. Um, if, you know, I mean, you think of Copic being able, you can re refill any marker, the sketch, a chow, a wide, anything with the proper ink, and it's going to be the same color. Um, so it's just a little, it's a little weird, and it's like their tri-blend markers are, maybe they're made in a different factory and not using the same ink or something, but there's definitely discrepancies in the color tones. Look at the alpine greens, um, the, uh, or the light, actually the light greens, the alpine greens look pretty good. 
except for that later one that seems off. The um, the light greens look good. I don't have any, that, that light green was one of their original tri-blends. So those look all right. The dark might be a little bit, a little bit lighter than the original dark, but, um, but yeah, it's, uh, I love them. I like the, uh, I like the marker. One thing you do have to keep in mind is that you have to be careful not to split or damage the tip when you put it in there. Cause it's got like those little, those little ridges on the edge. Um, I like the nibs. I like the, I love the idea. I love the idea so much. It's why it's so frustrating because I want to say, yes, this is what beginners have been waiting for, but I'm not getting the blending that I need, and I'm a fairly experienced marker artist. Um, I think that this might be frustrating for a beginner expecting a really flawless blend. I colored these images with them. I think they blended okay, but definitely the, the purples are difficult to blend anyway, so why wouldn't you have them closer together in a marker that's designed for people to be able to blend? The name is Try Blend. It's, they're meant to blend. Great for doing like streaky effects like wood. Uh, the grays blended really well. Grays and browns usually blend pretty well anyway, but I did have some issues with streakiness. That said, I love these little characters that I colored. I'm going to use them on a, in a card coming up. Um, and I had a fun time using them, and I love that you could have so many colors in such a compact way, but um, I wish the colors were a little closer together on some of these blends, as some of the colors they picked do not make sense. Unless some ink markers got inked wrong, it almost seems like I both two of those markers got inked with the same ink. Um, the, the, those ends weren't even on the same marker, so it's not like there could have been some mixing inside the chamber. And I did open up some of the old ones and there was like divisions, like on this one, there was like a plastic divider in there on the old kind that would keep the little pads inside from touching. And that's another thing, the pads that are filled up with ink are smaller, so these markers are not gonna last you as long as like a, a full marker like this that has that whole inner section for a barrel. That also said these markers are pretty chunky and big, so the pads are wider than in like a Copic or whatnot. Um, but, uh, and then if, but if you have smaller hands holding a larger barrel like this might be less comfortable. Myself, I prefer the uh, oval barrels of like the uh, uh, Copic Sketch or um, Blick Studio or Hoo Classic markers. I like that size personally. This isn't like a deterrent for me, for me not to use these, but I just thought I would mention it. So um, I would kind of give them a seven out of 10. I love the nibs. I'll probably re-ink them with my own ink as they dry out and try to get a little bit closer with the colors I think they should be. But um, but there you have it. I feel like you can go forth with this information and make a really smart choice about whether or not you want to buy these markers. And this is why I use markers a lot before I review them because my first thoughts, my first try with these, I loved them. Loved them first time I started playing with them. But it was after a much swatching and coloring and thinking and using and experimenting that I realized they do have some flaws and I just want you to keep your mind, your mind open. If I get any more information about these, I will put them in the video description. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy thorough reviews. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.